As runners, we all challenge ourselves in ways we never thought possible, pushing the boundaries of what we're capable of to smash through targets and set ourselves new bigger and better ones. This awesome hobby that we share gives us one thing in common and it brings us together as a community. Whether you're working towards completing your first park run or you're a veteran of the sport who's run 100 ultra marathons, we all know the feeling of reaching that maxed out effort and our own red line. Welcome to our podcast where your hosts Brett Ellsmore and Andy Maguire discuss the struggles, the successes and everything in between on our running journeys as we all work towards the next time we're running the red line. And welcome to episode 42 of Running the Red Line. I am your host, Brett, and I am here, as always, with my co-host, Andy. And Andy is, oh, what, less than two and a half weeks away from Valencia now. Well, How's it well, going? Yeah, we had the official email saying that uh, the race is happening today. So uh, Amazing. At least there's no limbo anymore. Uh, so yeah, just all systems go now and I can carry on tapering, uh, and, and yeah, so it's all, all my energy is going back into the races on. So, uh, Amazing. yeah, it's nice to yeah. have a bit of clarity about it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's good news. I think it's possibly good news for Valencia as well, because the, I, I guarantee the economy is going to be screaming out for some money to be injected into that into all the small businesses and everything yeah. so having a, an event happen should hopefully bring a load of people in and some well needed funds yeah i i think again with a lot of us runners i don't think any of us will really begrudge giving a a tenner or 20 euro or something like that to charity and if every apparently there's thirty five thousand runners doing valencia plus family yeah. as well so it's going to be you know, a hundred, a hundred thousand people around Valencia on that extra, extra people around that weekend. So yeah, maybe we can all, you know, if we can't physically grab a shovel and actually help, at least we can maybe give a bit of money and donate or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. and because uh, there is an official sort of gift aid for for the Val Valencia kind of cleanup operation to to give. I don't know what that is. I'll have to find out what that is. But uh, but yes, it, it's it's really nice knowing that the race is on. Every my inbox blew up at about eleven o'clock this morning. So everyone's like, "Yes, it's on! It's on! It's on!" So uh, yeah, yeah, mega excited and yeah, just what well, the one thing that I've I've got to adjust to is when we get over to Valencia, it's going to be back to like September UK temperatures. Yes. And I don't know if you went out this morning or went for a run or whatnot, but it was freezing this morning. So yeah, it was chilly today, wasn't it? I, I'm now going into winter phase. And getting used to close, you know, getting getting ready to run in the winter, and then in two weeks' time, I'm going to have to strip off again, and uh, you know, it could be up to twenty degrees apparently, maybe even higher. Oh wow! So, okay. So um, who knows? Maybe anyone that's done Valencia can tell me what the actual temperature is like. But what what I have seen is that it is particularly cold before the sun comes up in the morning. So I'll have to I'll have to think about what to wear beforehand. But uh, but yeah. Really excited Amazing. and uh, so glad that the race is on. Good, 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 good. Um, yeah, I've had an interesting morning uh, this morning. I went up to uh, the doctors because, um, I don't know, can you remember a while back I mentioned to you that I'd had like um, a pain in my like lower abs just above like um, my pubic area in yeah, the right-hand yeah. side. I had a bit of a <laughs> bit of a pain there. Um and it's been going on since July last year, so about 18 months. I thought it was finally time to go and get it checked out. Um, so I went to the doctor's today, and he's booking me in for an ultrasound because uh, he thinks it's a hernia. Hooray! Oh, oh no. So it look, looks like I've been running through a hernia for the last uh, 18 months. <laughs> so uh, we, we shall find out for sure when he uh, books me in for this ultrasound, but that could be, I don't know, a couple of months before that happens. So... 
So yeah. we'll see. But oh, he, he said he's, he's happy for me to keep uh, exercising. That's not a problem. But if it gets any worse, then uh, yeah. But oh. there we go. Just just something else to add to uh, add to all, all my injuries. But there we go. Yeah, it's all good. Oh, it's, it's all good. <laughs> anyway, uh, enough of that. We have some special guests again this week, don't we? Yes, we're joined by two old friends uh, who have. They were coming back to uh, give us a debrief on what they were briefing us on. Only a couple of months ago, a couple of weeks ago, actually, these two these two gentlemen ran the Chester Marathon. Chester, in, what was that? Oh, Chester in uh, October, and uh, and uh, yeah. So, shall we? Without any further ado, shall we get them back on? We, we shall. Um, so, welcome to the pod, KQ and. TQ. Oh, hang on. Hello. Oh, How are we doing? It's by my co- I've done it again. It's your podcast. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Thanks for joining Welcome. us. Welcome. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Great to be back. How are we both doing? Ruddy, bloody good, actually. Um, yeah, we're doing all right. Chester, as we'll take a deeper dive in in a little while but recovery's gone very well we're back into training we've raced since so yeah aside from the actual race day the recovery has gone a-okay kq how about you yeah yeah all good all good um we we took a, a about a week off did we post uh, chester um no running little bit of gym work but um yeah it was uh, Good to get back out, you know, relatively soon after Chester, and uh, and try and now as we move on, sort of uh, use some of those marathon miles that are banked as we enter the winter phase. Well, you you guys have had a change of brand. Oh yeah, have you? The YouTube brand has has changed. We've yeah, we've arranged the uh, yeah. Me and Carl negotiated the rights. To, uh, to, <laughs> to streamline it, to, um, it's just cute. It's just cute. Yeah, yeah. Q with, with, with with that change, though, is there a change in the um, who does the editing and who puts the YouTube videos up and everything? No, it's uh, so it's still, <laughs> still the same channel, Brett. It's still the same channel. <laughs> so don't be fooled if I've lost any loyal TQ followers. <laughs> it's still the same. <laughs> It, it, they've rebadged it, you fool. That's all. <laughs> so, I like the uh, idea that people have unsubscribed because it's no longer all about TQ. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, then two blokes. I think it was you, Pupe, that left the room. <laughs> and really not <laughs> so, so, uh, so, yeah. so, yeah, so, so just quickly, just remind everybody so, how many cues are on the run and who are the cues? Go on, Carl. Yeah, well, there's, there's five Q brothers and there are five runners in the family. So all five of us run. Um, uh, you sort of caught the channel in a bit of a purple patch for me and TQ. Um, so that's where sort of the, the channels was born, really, where me and TQ working together. Um, but if we go in age order um, on one of the most recent videos, cross country, we've got DQ. Um, so he's the oldest of the brothers, Dale Quiney. Um, I'm second, KQ. Um, and third in line is AQ, Adam Quiney. He's had a little appearance here and there. Um, now, he, when it comes to running, he's, he's probably the most fierce. Um, it's just he's had a real rotten time of it at the moment with a, a couple of knee operations. And um, he's working his way back. Um, but AQ's third in line, um, TQ fourth in line, and then we've got the baby rhino, which is uh, RQ, Ryan Quiney. So, yeah, there's five of us, and, and Ryan was at the latest cross country, um, and he's now working his way back into some fine form, um, such a natural talent. So, yeah, there's the five of us that run, and all brothers. Awesome. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed at the... Um the relays cross country video 
at the end where <laughs> where Ryan said the pace he'd run, and you were both, no way, you didn't run that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a response. That's a VAR, that. <laughs> he's so infuriating of us all because he's such a natural talent and he can go for months without running and then it'll take him a couple of weeks, a couple of part runs, and he'll be up on your shoulder. And uh, you're thinking, my God, you know, imagine if you're strung together a 12-week programme and what you could do. But uh, if you're listening to this, Rhino, it's about consistency. and uh, <laughs> He's got youth well, on his side, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. He has, yeah. Because obviously you met Ryan for the first time last week, Brett, didn't you? Yes, and he ran, I did, yeah. He ran a brilliant race at Northampton, which we'll get into in a little while. But literally by the time that we'd got back, we nipped out for just a couple of light refreshments. And Ryan was already on the Instagram page, emailing different brands saying, are you aware of our channel? So he's... <laughs> <laughs> he wants to take this channel forward, but he's, he's, a, he's a Matt. Yeah, he should start calling Matt Matt Choi. Uh, he's least... <laughs> <laughs> MQ. I'm on the court list last week. Never mind any bloody e <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brilliant! Yeah, well, good, to, good. That's that's good stuff. And um, we were going to obviously chat to you boys about um, a bit of cross country because I know you're you're back in business in the. Uh, You've got the spikes back on recently. And also the marathon that you boys did uh, back in, uh, blimey, how long ago was Chester now? October the 6th. That's, so, yeah, is that, I mean, that's, yes, yeah, eight, seven weeks, five weeks ago, is it? Something like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, where do we start then? Would you want to start about cross country first? Or do you want to go straight into the, uh, the marathon and how well, it went? Let's dig, let's, whilst, yeah, we'll get, We'll, we'll go into the marathon. It, it, the initial starting point. So, obviously, we'd done our retros, you know, our respective training between us, me and Carl, and it was different, le different levels. Um, stop number one, getting into Chester, the heavens opened. And that was where we looked around and we thought, no, we didn't envisage this. There's so <laughs> many people in Chester and the atmosphere He's brilliant down at the race course, isn't it? And it's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when you're dealing with that autumnal rain, um, really sort of coming down and everyone's sort of looking around going, come on, Mr. no, no, come on. And you never have enough time before a race. You never have enough time. You tell yourself you think you've got the time, but when Chester's at a standstill, you've got to park and then you do, you know, you're doing your bits on the camera and stuff. Before you know it, it's 20 to 9. I haven't even warmed up. It's literally that rushed. Yeah. Um, you just so get the excuse to critique you. <laughs> no, 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 no excuses. I'm just setting a pic. I'm just painting a picture as to what it looked like before the gun went. Weren't you? Um, weren't you uh, in a, a carb coma as well? Because you've had 58 croissants or something. <laughs> yeah. well, there's some rather incriminating pictures from the day before. <laughs> Has anyone listening ever seen the picture of Alan Partridge with the Toblerone? Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll flip that on and specifically almond croissants from Starbucks. So, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so, so at what point did it start raining then? As soon as you got in the car and headed north, it was, it was bad. Literally upon us getting in there and we pull up, we're a little bit late and we're looking round. All the car parks are jam-packed. But then some, some we met this one guy like down a side street and he was like, he was this cows lad. He was like, five pounds. <laughs> and he was like, what time will you be back? And we're like, midday. And he turns around to me and Carl and he's like, piss off, you ain't coming back at midday. We're like, no, 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 we'll be back at midday. And we give this guy a fiver and then his car park went Ramo, and we managed to just get down to li literally as we landed at the race course, the heavens opened, and it was pretty much like that for 30 40 minutes cold, really cold. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, what about um, your kit then? So, did you, did you I remember you both saying, Was Todd, was you at Alphas and Cole, you were at Vapor Flies on the day? Was that what you did? 
Is both that yeah. what you both? Oh, you both <laughs> wore vapor flies. Mine were uh, mine were the twos, weren't they? So I went with the uh, next percent twos. Um, I've managed to get hold of a pair. This was rogue, actually, because on the pod previous, we were both going threes, weren't we? Vapor five threes. Mm. Um, but I'd managed to get hold of a pair of twos and yeah, it was a bit of a last minute change, but I'd, I'd had a good session or two just on the lead up in um, this fresh pair of twos and they've always been my quickest. Um, so yeah. I went with it, went a little bit rogue, but they, they were great. Um, yeah, really you, enjoyed it. When you say managed to get hold of a pair... Was it from that scouse bloke in the car park? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, AQ, yeah, they, they, uh, I, I felt a bit guilty. That, but AQ, um, uh, in his rehab, the way he tends to sort of give himself some motivation, he'll he'll buy himself the next pair of super shoes that are coming out. And um, he had a pair, and given that he's had sort of 18 months on the uh, sideline with this knee injury, and, and he's, he's obviously now coming back from it, but he had a fresh pair of, of the twos that he hadn't touched, and uh, I managed to barter a deal with him, and we're both size nine, so uh, <laughs> that worked out. Uh, that's probably one of the good things about being brothers. You can just n nick each other's stuff. Yeah. So um, did you... Um, did you start on the start line together and did you have a plan to go out together or did you have a, right, see you at the end, look, whatever happens, happens? Well, if you watch the video, Carl waves goodbye to me. Then I thought, <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. That's, that's great. <laughs> Carl goes, see you, mate. Have a nice yeah. race. <laughs> I, I also <laughs> thought... That I, I thought Carl was going to look into um, possibly getting a second camera so he could film his race too, but uh, oh. he decided to leave yeah. it all on you, didn't he, TQ? Yeah, as always. <laughs> the man who edits doesn't get any of the thanks. It's just, you know, it's a thankless task. Um, Talent book, content creator and editor. Uh, at that stage, it was still TQ on the run, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was the sign-up. Was the sign up. Um, but getting in getting into the race, it's it, it's one that like uh, the the atmosphere is brilliant, and I gotta say, for it not being a major, it's a brilliant event. And honestly, don't know if anyone from that way on. I know that there's there's been a few there's been a few people that have commented on uh the Chester video that were behind the organization of it. So I don't know if they'll be listening to this, but the organization was brilliant. It was hmm. Like a one lap course, I cannot thank the marshals and how well it was done was amazing. The nature of the course, however, for a marathon, I won't be returning based on that course profile. It was it's such a good start. It's a it's a tough start. Didn't anticipate it is. It. it's up, it's all up. Yeah, it's up yeah. centre, up again. And it probably wasn't until about 3.5 mile where it evened out a little bit. But then you're in country lanes then. The the crowds yeah. have gone and it's it's you on either these A roads or country lanes that because of the weather it was wet. And it oh man, tough. It was a really tough, tough experience. Um for a marathon, it's changed my viewpoint. I don't think you can pick any old marathon now. I think you've got to be the big yeah. one if you're gonna get the so, numbers. So the rain, did it stop? before the race and then not rain again or did it rain during the race as well at about 12 mile carl was it something like that? 11 12 mile it was it had stopped it was cool it never really it didn't it only sort of opened up in halt at 16 17 mile and it was sunny for a small period of time i think <laughs> i think jill I think <laughs> you're from halt <laughs> she had a word with the weather um but that was the only time, and aside from that, it was it was just great. It was a, it was a great October day. But the, oh, what a yeah. the, the the rain was one thing, but the the temperature was for for me there was no wind and the temperature was okay, and so I can deal with 
that mm, is all I can, uh, you know, that sort of added to the atmosphere, really. Yeah, okay, it's not ideal, but, you know, it, 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 there wasn't like driving at you and you weren't getting like, you know, you didn't have that real driving wind as well. So, yeah, it, 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 it was drizzling, but it didn't seem to stop throughout, if I'm honest. So um, what, um, what was the uh, what was the fueling uh, of choice for the day for you both? Was it a similar kind of Morton gels or were you on carb drinks or what were you doing for fueling for the day? Um, so I'd sort of gone, um, I'd gone with, I, I think I'd pack seven, um, but in the end, I think I only took on five. Um, there was, uh, pre, so pre, so during the race, I'd gone um, the SIS um, meta carbs. So they, the 40 gram ones, I had two of those. Um, went one um 10k in and then i followed that up with two precision fuel um lighter carbs but with caffeine um so i followed those two up every 10k so that was my three first gels i then went with the second um sis 40 grams and then i had two more precision fuels so sort of tried to back the caffeine up a little bit later on in the um, in the race, so you know the pick me up when when you needed it most. But it got to that stage again where I sort of struggled to take any more on during the race. Um, so my, I think in the end ended on taking six gels. Right. How about you, Todd? I'm gonna a proper proper and vibey shape from me. I just had the real sort of standard cis gels because that's all I've trained with and invested into Morton. Um, I've had them on occasion, but I didn't train with them. Uh, so I didn't go specific like Carl. I just sort of had, I had um, four, I think I stomached four and then I went to have a fifth at probably 21 mile and it, it wasn't happening. But my stomach was fine. Like my, my body was all right. But you know, and it's just like, nah, I just want to get this done now. I don't want to take on another yeah. I, I, I felt like it was the point beyond return. It wasn't going to turn me around, I didn't think, because where we were on that course. Um, so it was just the real sort of basic, the, the cis gels, which is something that going forward into the next prep, I'll change. I'll look to to go with something. I'll I'll experiment or tr because you know the reason why the Morton gels etc are a little bit more expensive is they're they're designed better, aren't they? Really for for what you want to try and achieve, in my opinion. So I'll be looking at trying to branch out a little bit for the next one, but for this one it was just cis gels. Yeah. Mm. Do you think? Do you think the reason you couldn't take on the last one was a bit of flavour fatigue or the sickliness of them, or it was it just? That you just didn't want to take any more fuel on. It's that we, we've, we've all reached that point in me that you get it out and you go, right then. Oh, God, no. <laughs> it was just flight. Yeah, flavour fatigue. Um, the real positive from the morning was that, as I say, my, my body was fine. It was just my legs and the other bits. But actually, in take a fuel, no problem. So, yeah. So, yeah, I responded yeah. well to the cells. Well, well, we'll see. The the, the 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 caffeine gel at about twenty one about twenty one mile twenty two mile um yeah it was a was a bit of a lifesaver it, it sort of just that little pick me up and that leveler when you needed it most so again something that I took from this one was that having an an all um having that option um which I hadn't done at Manchester. Uh, with just something to, um, uh, you know, give you a little bit of a spike when you need it most because you're mentally fatigued as well. Well, you obviously you're so mentally fatigued and you need to yeah. be brought back and a little bit of caffeine at that stage. Yeah, yeah help yeah. breathe. Because caffeine it isn't just a, a like a um, a perk up. Thing. It's also a natural painkiller, isn't it? So it slightly numbs the the pain of the marathon towards the end. Um, so yeah, I think caffeine gels are or fuel with caffeine 
is a is a good idea to take is every it, now and then during the race. Is, is caffeine a, a natural <laughs> de dehydrant, if you know what I mean? Is, does it's, does it... it? Yeah, it it's a um. What oh come on, what do they call it? Um, a diuretic. a diuretic. There we go. Yeah, it's a diuretic, yeah. so it does make you want to go to the loop. But when you're not fully hydrated anyway, because you're running a marathon, it's not really going to affect you too much. Jeez. And Cole's always hydrated with his bucket of water. <laughs> um but um yeah i've i've been um listening to a few podcasts recently about um marathon fueling and things like that and apparently um they were saying that when um they started doing all the calculations of how much fuel you could take on and how many uh, grams of carbs you could take on per hour they were thinking it was somewhere around 60 to 80 grams an hour but they were working just on glucose and yeah. when they realised that you it, that you can use fructose and sucrose as well, and because your body's got different receptors and different ways of transferring those fuels into glycogen and energy for your muscles, apparently that's when they realised you can take up to 100 um, grams an hour um, because you're taking on multi-fuel rather than just the glucose. And apparently cyclists they tend to, some of them tend to take 120 grams an hour because they're not bouncing up and down like runners and they don't get so much gut distress. They can take on more, but runners now apparently with a multi-fuel can take on up to 100 grams an hour. That's why in my marathon in Valencia, I'm taking seven gels and 14 pineapples with me <laughs> <laughs> and six watermelons. <laughs> so, so sucrose and fructose is are they are they natural sugars? Yes. So fr fructose is what you get in fruit, um, yeah. and then sucrose is like uh, sugar, like yeah. cane sugar and all that sort of stuff. And then glucose is your main carbs, which are in all your carby, starchy foods. And that's more abundant. It's easier to get into, easier to pack into gels, for example. That's is yes. that the most. Yeah, yeah. Popular but, but all the oozes. most <laughs> most gels that you find will just be glucose, but then the more expensive ones will tend to have uh, fructose or sucrose in it as well. Okay. Yeah, that's where the um, the the SIS beta fuel ones um, were were really good. Obviously, they're a little bit more expensive, but you've just got to be careful because on the market there are they you know call themselves like super gels and stuff that they can cause some deep GI distress because they're not coming from two sources. And if they're cramming 40 grams in and some up to 50 grams in one gel, yeah. that's going to cause you, uh, 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 you know, some issues if you're going to take those on. And you know, sometimes you've just got to, again, it's practicing with what works, isn't it? But, yeah. um, well, if, if, either, if either of you two tried any like solid fuel, so like me and Andy use the boom bars, um, but then I also use a uh, power bar um, gummies as well. Um, have you ever tried any of solids to go along with the gels? Um, the, the, the only thing that I have, tr I haven't tried that. Uh, and, and obviously listening to the pod, you know, listening to you guys talk about them boom bars, um, you know, it's something that I definitely want to give a go. Um, I did have um, during Manchester. I didn't use it at Chester, but the the, the dextrose tablets. So they got multidextrin yes. in them, um, and sometimes just an alternate to a, a gel, just to break one of those and put them in the side of your mouth. You know, without even thinking, having that sort of fuel being taken on board, just absorbing that into the gums. Um, I felt it was quite a good shape, but I haven't tried any of the solids now. Yeah. Um, what what about um, fluid intake? How how often did you take a drink or take on water? Just every possible opportunity with the water. Um, just a mouthful. Keep it in the mouth, swill it around, and then you know if you need to spit it out. But just at every opportunity, just to get something on board without swigging it. Uh, that was sort of my tactic. I don't know about you, Todd. Yeah, something very similar, mate. Just as, uh, just as you said there, dude. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. As <laughs> not, not enough break. If I'm going to be totally honest, I now probably from about seven or eight mile 
just tried to I didn't feel particularly thirsty and that's not um yeah that I, di- I didn't I didn't take on enough fuel or I didn't take on enough water I kept it purely to the gels a bit of water here and there and it probably wasn't until it was too late that I thought I'm a bit thirsty now <laughs> so, yeah I, I suppose though in the gels you've got uh, water as part of the gel haven't you so it's not like you're not taking on any water at all you're taking on a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah and it could be worse you could be andy and just gulp every bottle of water and then violently vomit it all over a tree at the end of the marathon that's that's what i did at chester because i i felt massively dehydrated and um i don't know what you were doing on that weekend that first weekend in october 2023 but i don't know if you remember it being freakishly hot that was the day you did uh, Ulster 10k wasn't it Brett? yeah well that day it, it temperatures got up to like 25 degrees and you both know that hill now at 25 miles that was that was not fun that that last three miles was bloody horrible and uh, I remember just getting to a water station having a cup or a bottle or whatever it was and then thinking I'm going to go back for another one because that didn't quite quench my thirst and then when I the adrenaline left my body afterwards and so did the contents of my body. So, uh, yeah, that wasn't very particularly uh, pleasant. But um, I was going to say, well, Carl, then, for you, for your race, when did the race really start for you? Was it when you said, ta-da, to, uh, to Todd at the start? Were you <laughs> face, facing an uphill battle from the start, or did you feel quite quite good until, I don't know, later on in the race? Um, it became... Uh, within the first three or four miles, I was quite. I said on the, the you know previous that was monitoring my heart rate throughout the training and and working on that as a good gauge for you know a barometer to sit at and know the the the, the level of effort that's going in at the moment. I got concerned early on that it didn't. Uh, you know, within the first three or four mile, I was already up at sort of one six five towards 170 beats per minute and um, which at that stage I'm always thinking hang on that's close to my threshold here and this is quite early on it's not leveling off I'm working hard Um, and for that to happen at three four mile you know at at, at that stage I'm monitoring that more than I'm monitoring my pace Mm -hmm. yeah Um, so that didn't, and again, so yeah, tried to manage that effort level, and uh, I did back off. I, I consciously backed off a little bit, and lot, I, I, at that stage, I was with a group. I lost that group, let them go, you know, with a peace of mind and trying to sit in. Never really got much more comfortable than that, um, and I felt like I was working too hard too early, and it got to sort of 13, 14 mile, where I realised at that stage then, you know, my legs are starting to feel this as well now. Um, not only is it a case of, you know, you did that, you're working hard, your effort level's too high for what potentially was the target. And given the nature of the course, your legs are starting to feel it. And then mm-hmm. comes sort of 18, 19 mile, um, the fatigue in the legs is where again it became very similar to Manchester, and that's where it hit, and it was a case of surviving again from there on in. Um, so yeah, that is is definitely a feeling that's becoming too familiar in the marathons. That you know I'm hitting survival mode earlier than I'd like, and it, it's something that. On reflection, there are gaps in the training. There was under preparation, if now we're talking honestly. And um, I've been able to do a lot of reflecting on what it was like and and how the marathon went in the end. Um, But my God, it's given me the thirst to come back for more. And if anything now, I'm just itching to get into the next block. Um, But yeah, on Chester, it's more the legs and more at that... 16, 17 mile, Jesus, this is now an effort level of which I'm not prepared for or haven't prepared for at this stage of the race. Um, yeah. so, with yeah. with your heart rate, were you working off wrist-based heart rate or did you have a monitor on? 
Yeah, I've got. I've, I've tried. The block was with a heart rate monitor on, um, and so I obviously race now and been a real great training tool and and um, you know for my easy runs and and throughout the build up and and the races actually now and the sessions that we're in, it's really helped just gauge. But for the marathon, it it, it was something that I. I'd used as a tool just to base my effort level on and uh, knowing the distance that you've got to go, having that as a tool, I thought was, um, you know, a good gauge. And yeah. what about that last mile, by the way, that uh, that mile 25, you know, that last hill, just, just quickly talk us through that last mile and what's going through your head and like, were you in a group by then or were you completely on your own? Uh, what was, what was great was, um, uh, there's, there was a lot of people on the course that were, as we're running with and, and at that stage running past, there's a lot of shapes and there was a, a, you know, a few of the guys that had, we spoke to at the end that had listened to the podcast and had watched a bit of the channel and it was, you know, and, you know, keep going KQ and, uh, that, you know, thank him for the videos. And at that stage, mentally, that pick me up was, was really, was, was, was brilliant um and yeah because as you've said that course you've got three or four mile on the lead up to that hill which are, are it's quite lonely um you know you're out on that a road and that goes on and on and on mm. um, and it's not until you get back into chester that you hit the hill and you realize actually we we're, we're close now we're, we're getting there yeah and there's a lot of on that hill you go from having nobody and then you go into chester and you're greeted with a lot of people on the hill so it's a real assault on the senses um yeah. which which was great at that stage because that along with the caffeine gel was the pick me up to get me over the finish line yeah so uh what about you todd what like when did the race start to kick your ass was it like similar sort of story 400 metres, maybe. 400 metres. <laughs> <laughs> a, real quick, a real quick little stop of this one. Um, yeah, it, it was fine initially. I hadn't done any work. Like I, I listened back on our podcast and I was like, my ideas are way above my station, but I, I like my I like us to be honest online. So, um, yeah, I, you've got me out and back, haven't you? where you go around the cone and you come back. Um, mm. That was one of the, that's about nine mile. Um, I was with a pack there and there was a bit of conversation as, the, as it is of what we're looking to do and what we're looking to achieve. And I saw Carl and that was just before we went into Wrexham and it was okay. That doesn't, it doesn't feel easy by any stretch of the imagination. At this point, we're probably like 626 is a mile or something like that. So a little bit quicker fractionally a bit quicker than what I wanted. Um, went through Wrexham and then you come out of, you come out of Wrexham the other side, the other, the other end and you go out on this A road that, that's pretty much taking you up to the halfway point. And that's where the, that's where the weather went and it went quite dark and windy and wet. And we went over halfway and I literally went over at halfway and I thought I've got to do another 13 mile of this. Seriously, and that I haven't had that feeling. I haven't had that feeling in a race. I don't. I don't know if I've ever had it. Last time I ran around really? them, I don't. Think I've had it. We all have our pain and how we deal with it, and how we 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 get through it. But I thought, seriously, we've got to go again. Um, managed to hang in there, but the pack that I was with made some moves along the way. So what was now a six thirty pace. They were knocking down to a 6.25 and I couldn't go with them. Had some great support in that little village um, that Jill lives in. Um, <laughs> got up that hill and tried to just hang in there. But as Carl said, it's that relentless coming back in that I, you would just forever look up this road and it was always just nudging up, nudging up. Yeah. And then we got to that. 23 mile mark, 24 mile mark. And the hills don't mean they're on the hills a killer. It, it's a real, real tough hill. And if you haven't got that in your legs, the, well, there's a little approach to the hill. So the, the hill goes up, drops back down, and then goes up the actual one. 
which at the end of 20, at the end of 24 mile, you don't want. And then coming back into the town centre and finishing, I was really, really surprised to see Carl. I mean, as I say, my expectations were dropping, but I was like, you've got to at least get good for Asia. Come on, you've, you've in essence ran this for nothing if you don't go and get good for age. And it was touch and go. <laughs> And I, and, I, and I got over the... I, it's not that I've not run it for anything, but the, the, the long-term goal here is London. Um, and, I, I need, and I need a number to go into London with. Um, not this year, the year after. So, but we managed to get over. And I was, as I say, I was shocked to see Carl still in the pen. I finished and I don't know if either of you have had it, but you finish and then your body just goes. And it's like... Everything I've never had like you've, it's a mixture of coming out of a really really hot bath and walking around straight away. You got really light headed, but your legs you don't have control over. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like I'm I'm, I'm I'm scrambling around trying to find a seat. Someone just someone just sit me down quickly. And there's there's, there's people I'm moving people off sat down that have come to watch. I'm like, no no, I need to take a seat. Thank you. Move. <laughs> sat down. <laughs> I have boys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> elderly have... lady doing a go <laughs> and comes and barges her off this park bench. What time is it? I had to you. <laughs> 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 Be a magazine. If anyone this that doesn't know what the reference is, uh, uh, can of sugar coat later, a few Harry Bow, several Harry Bow, and I mic'd up and put the camera in Carl's face, and he was like, "Mate, you being serious?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. Yeah, and then and then you use that shot for the first shot of the video. <laughs> Yeah. So marathons are hard. That's where yeah. it's just. <laughs> yeah, it's. They, I mean, it's. It's almost for someone like me who's feels like light years behind you boys in terms of times. It's almost sobering that you are finding marathons as as hard, if not harder, than I'm finding them. You know, so it's so relative, isn't it? Hard, hard is relative, isn't it? Hard is hard for you. Hard is hard for me. We both know what, like, yeah. you know, how, how that we all, everyone knows how that feels, and that's why you've got that all in common. And it's it's it's, it's madness that what right we're running is just yeah, it's so unique, isn't it? Because at yeah. the end of that marriage, whether it was you know four hours, five hours, or you know two fifty, we're all looking at each other and want to you know bump and say you know what a great race and well done guys for getting over the finish line and we're all feeling the same aren't we so so how did, how did you both actually do then what what did you both get over the line in i'm looking at carl carl's looking at me <laughs> 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 uh, what was what was my chip uh was it 251 50 fair play yeah two yeah, I think was what I got over him. I think, yeah. And I was just just daft, just outside 254. So nice. Look, I, look, look, I don't it, you know, it's I think the, the woo touched on this. Um Will, Will touched on this in his newest video when he moaned when we're all moaning about our times and saying, Oh, you know, like I've just touched on the good fraud. It is all relative to what the training you put in. And, you know, everyone's going after different goals. Having looked back at it now, I think it's such a fine balance between, like, I trained for a sub-three marathon and I turned up to a very unforgiving course and I trained just enough, just enough, probably not even really. I probably didn't even deserve a sub-three, really. I, I, I honestly, I look back now. Um, but it was such a fine balance for me with this builder because it was the confidence between that reoccurring injury and really going for this marathon prep properly, which if you're turning up to a marathon, if you're serious about a marathon, 
you you need to do the miles. You can't not you can't yeah. go and fake it or else you'll you'll have the moment at 18, 20 mile where you look round and go, um, shall I just roll off the course? And you'll have them moments if you're not prepped for it. So I know yeah. well I've it before, but I a hundred percent know it now. <laughs> people people have had not not had a go at me, but they've kind of said to me, bear in mind I'm looking for my 320, they've said if, but I'll paraphrase. Why are you running so much going for a 320? Because like last week I did 120 miles, which is, I think for you boys, 73 miles, something like that, which is a hell of a lot for me. But I've done... Oh, when I, when I, no, 120K. 120 he, he worked in them silly kilometres, didn't he? He just said miles because he realises that's supposed yeah, to be... It's, it's the only way I can communicate. And um, <laughs> I... Uh, I have to guess what the mileage is. But yeah, I think it was 75 mile I did or 73 or something last week. And people have, a couple of people have been saying, or I've been reading in forums and stuff, if you're going for a 320 marathon, you don't need to be doing anywhere near that. You need to be doing quantity, quality over quantity, which I agree with. But last year I did like a little test with myself. Can I run a marathon having trained for a half marathon? The answer is no. Because the volume in my legs, even at the speed I was doing the marathon, was nowhere near need what I needed to get me over the line for the marathon. Because I remember finishing that that marathon in, in Chester and just thinking, like you just said then, Todd, I just, I, 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 there was so many, well, Carl, you said it, there's so many gaps in my training where I should have done X, Y, Z. And I, I, that's why... I think getting the miles in your legs is so, so important, isn't yeah. it? And it's yeah, almost I, like that muscle memory, isn't it? Yeah, I, I disagree with like those people saying you need quality over quantity. You need both. You need that distance and that mileage in your legs. Because if you haven't got that mileage in your legs and you're not working to the fatigue in your legs and getting yeah. that simulation of running through fatigue, then how are you ever going to run through fatigue in the actual marathon? Because your legs yeah. are going to feel horrible. So if if during training they feel even worse, and you can still hit the paces, you've then got that confidence during the race that you know you can push through it because you've ran through worse. Yeah, and you yeah. can't if you're running on you, fresh legs every time in training. That that's cheating. Yeah, you can't do that. I think you know it, it's what works for that individual it, it, when it comes to. You know, you, you read so much about the, the Lydiard method where it's all about time on feet and, you know, get the miles in at whatever pace you can. And there's, on reflection, the gaps really were those hard long runs because I felt as I going into this build, the mileage was there. Um, you know, peak week was sort of 80. Either side of that was 75 miles plus. Um, so in those, you know, that in those sort of four weeks of, of my peak in a twelve week build up, I was living at a mileage that I was hadn't done before. Um, mm. but the gaps really in in place of what I believe to be longer threshold miles um, wasn't enough. The, quant the the quantity in those miles wasn't enough um, at that pace. So you know, I've done a lot of I spoke to a lot of the boys at the club. I mean, there was one of the lads actually appeared on our recent video. He's, he, he's a bit of a legend down the club, Martin Williams. Um, you know, he, he ran, he's got, uh, he got run for Britain Commonwealth um, and his marathon build-ups would all include those hard, long runs, whether it's, 60 60 uh, 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 marathon pace and float or whether it's one on one off for two hours marathon float you know there wasn't enough of that um if i'm honest those long runs were too easy and it was about at that stage getting the mileage in at wow. a pace probably more comfortable you need to be un uncomfortable in those two hour yeah. long runs um, which is a gap that I've definitely sort of picked apart. The danger is always, though, isn't it? Running that fine line with overtraining and injury, I guess, that, which is why some people would say it's maybe erring on the side of caution to take those long runs a bit more easier, which is not 
a bad it's not going to be a, a bad thing you going up for do 15 18 20 miles maybe a little bit slower than marathon pace because it's better than not doing it at all but I, I think if yeah in a we in an ideal world which none of us live in yes we do all our runs to to, to target pace wouldn't we and, you know but it's so difficult to do that and you can never predict how you're going to feel because both going into the marathon you boys obviously well i know you'd had you know varied you know todd didn't you say that you hadn't run over 16 mile for like a year or something i hadn't something done like the, that? Uh, uh, I, 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 I didn't i did 120 mile i did not that was all i did yeah that's it 20 yeah yeah and it's like you can never predict what's going to happen. You can only do what you can do. And like, I don't know, you're just always running that fine line, aren't you, with, am I going to overtrain and risk getting injured and hobbling around like Brett all the time? <laughs> so, yeah. But the real the, the real positive about this is so obvious. So um, we finished, obviously, it's really difficult to recover in that initial stage. Like, the, the few hours following, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't walk. It was really, really, you know. Wow. Um, yeah. Well, no, no. You, I got carried to the car, but we ain't going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> I got, I got, got a helicopter rescue back home, but that's not important. <laughs> uh, thank God, the thank God, the hotel we were stopping in was only fifteen minutes out of Chester. Um, <laughs> but the but the actual recovery. Um, the actual recovery was good. I don't know why Emily thought it was a good idea to book a uh, a couple's massage the day after. She wasn't thinking. Right, you know. <laughs> see, see, I'll, I'll tell you this anecdote quickly. She sat there with our first drink after the marathon. I'm like, yep, this Guinness tastes lovely. She goes, I've got something planned in the morning. I thought, oh, okay. Right. Yes, this is breakfast. She ate breakfast or something. No, it's, um, it's a couple's massage. Well, you've done what? Really? I don't think that's <laughs> comfortable. So... So yeah, don't go anywhere near the yeah, don't go anywhere near the <laughs> the hamstrings, <laughs> the glutes, or the calves. Don't even think about the feet. Don't go there. So, uh, <laughs> but in the weeks, I took the time. I took the time to recover, and I'm not injured, and I'm I'm well out of it now. I'm four or five weeks out of it. I've raced since. I've been down the club two or three times since and raced. And as Carl says, we're ready now. We know what we've got to do. And we're, we're quite lucky that in the new year, there's there's a group of lads that are doing marathons, whether it be Newport, Manchester, London, that we've said Saturday or Sunday morning, as you know, we'll, we'll do it with Martin because he always, he, he loves going out on the long runs um, and, and doing that type of training. We'll go out as a group and we'll just hone in on them miles, whether it's one on, one off, 60 minutes 60 minutes off pace 60 minutes on pace and we've just got to get used to that by that that pain and that that burn long before the day and i found out on the day so i was but we live and we learn don't we and it was uh and as i say not injured long term so it's i'm good to go and i'm really glad i did it it's such an it's such an achievement it um don't blow my own trumpet but they're bloody hard. They're such... Yeah, yeah. Just completing a marathon's hard, let alone racing it. Yeah. So, and, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, sen I'm sensing that both of you sound a bit dejected about, about these times that you've run. And Chester, I'm sure you'll agree with me here, is one of the hardest marathon courses in the UK that you can probably do. You have run some serious times you know, 255 and 251 on, on that course is nothing short of pretty, you know, top 1% stuff. That's, pre that's pretty big. I, I am going to correct good. you and say 254 because uh, ev every, every, every minute counts, doesn't it, TQ? If anyone from London's listening for 2026, they've just <laughs> DQ'd me from the good for age. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's um would you do it You're again up, and you know that the we very quickly realized you know afterwards and the reflection is god i can't wait till the next build up and can't wait yeah. until we 
peek into what's next. Um, and it was a great event. So proud in the end with, um, you know, getting over the line. And there's so many people that we had a chat with afterwards that um, were in the same boat that uh, never read your nose up at any time that you can get yourself over 26.2. And certainly on a course like Chester, so no, we, uh, on reflection, absolutely. We always want to look at what we can do next, but very proud to have got what we did out of it. Yeah. So what what is the next big one? TQ. We've had some feedback in the comments regarding this. <laughs> I don't know if you, Brett, you, you're quite observational. Have you not clocked? We've been we've been trash talked in the uh, in our comments from the cross country video. <laughs> so, great video, but how many times did you mention Telford 10K? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty is the answer, is the answer. So that's our short-term goal before Christmas. We go away the week after after that on the run-up to Christmas, but Telford's going to be... So there's a couple of things, really. Although Telford's a goal, we love Telford, but Telford's a crazy morning if either of you have ever run it. It's just... No, no. You don't turn up with a game plan at, at, at Telford. You run as hard as you can until you die, literally. It's, it's one of them courses... It is. It honestly is, and it, it's um, it's a it's well, yeah. The, the, show, the only thing is, obviously, the weather's been the last couple of weeks, the last couple of years, been a bit. Meh. Talking about the weather yeah. a lot tonight, but the course, although it's the fastest, do I? I don't. I think I've run faster ten k. I've I've run better ten k's that are more conducive to quicker times in the UK. Yeah. I was going to say, because when you watch videos, the fact you go around a cone and then you're coming back on people on such a narrow path, that yeah, can't yeah. be can't be good for like trying to run the fastest 10K you've ever run. It's that, it, it's, it's that when you turn the cone on the second lap and you've got, it's probably not even a mile to go. It's probably, it's just it's about 0.8 mile, 0.9 maybe. But you know that every second, if you drop your head there, then that will heavily affect your time. And it's it's a momentum killer, turning that cone to get back to your pace, whatever your pace is, to go, right, I've got to get back up to that pace now. I've just come to a pretty much dead stop. Um, but it's a great event. There's another, There's so that's the 15th, the week before we're looking at a 10-miler, which is in Warsaw, the Warsaw area, which is the Sneed. Um Telford though, the, the, the Telford one is such a unique event because, I mean, for context, you get people travelling from across the country. Um, you know, there's like three waves for Telford and mm. on the fastest wave, so wave one, which will set off, you'll have guys, you'll have 50 to 100 guys sub 30 and that is just crazy. And yeah. in that first wave you've just got like the best athletes in the country at that distance and you'll 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 clock over a mile and you'll be floating because you're just aware of bodies around you running at a ridiculous pace um yeah. so that morning is one that we do look forward to is it a crazy race um but it is one that great to be a part of great to have just as a short term target before christmas and like todd says yeah. i think what we've not done before is the um the sneed 10 miler isn't it in warsaw um, carl go carry on <laughs> yeah it's quite a popular 10 miler isn't it and it's like they're both they're both on the run up to christmas um they've historically both been on the same morning so we've never been able to do the sneed 10 miler it's the christmas pudding run isn't it um, so it's always nice to get a festive one or two in. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. So next marathon, have you booked your next marathons for spring? We have. We have. It cost me £94, which was it's ridiculous. But yeah, yeah, I am. I am in for Manchester. Which I'm is too. incredible because you've done your hilly one now. And Manchester, there are no hills in Manchester. There's one apparently, Andy will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Altrincham's a hill. 
It is, <laughs> yeah. Not... You, you'll be halfway up it and you'll be like, this is, this is definitely a hill. But this, it's is, not this, is, this, is, this is Holt level. No, it's not quite Jill from Holt level. It's... Uh, <laughs> Um, it's it, it, how if you were to, to describe it, Brett, would you say it's about half a mile long, or maybe even a mile? No, it can't be a mile, can it? I I, I, I don't think it's even half a mile. I'd say, I'd say the hill itself is probably four hundred meters. Are you including the ramp? That's that's not what you're including. You know, the ramp over no. the overpass of the motorway. No, that's that's not a hill. That's that's not even a. A, an incline that's just a <laughs> bit of a slope um, yeah. the hill it, i'd say the hill itself is about 400 meters right you, well, you sounded quite you sounded quite mick dundee then you're like that's not a knife <laughs> <laughs> this is a knife <laughs> <laughs> um so uh, obviously carl's run manchester uh, we, did you you went up to manchester didn't you uh, this year, but you didn't run it, did you? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. I went and watched Carl. I had that, I had that foot problem, didn't know a couple of weeks before. So I'll return to Manchester. Um, and my right hand man is going elsewhere. He's yeah, he's going to another part of the UK that morning for another marathon. So we'll be split up. And well, be what was that? Sorry, Carl. Yeah, fingers crossed. It's the the good for age applications in um, for London, and so we should be hearing back. Um, it, it said mid mid to late November, so I don't know whether you've got any inside info, Brett. But um, I I, the I applications haven't. in for the London. Yeah, I I, I haven't, um, and I, I'm not sure what I should say really. Um, <laughs> Because I've been I've been keeping it a little bit of a secret so I don't get too much uh, hassle from people, uh, but I have already got a place for London. Andy touched on oh, this last fantastic. Week. I was listening. Yeah. I was running along. I was listening, thinking, hold on, Brett's going to London. What? I don't know about this. He didn't, he didn't share this information with me. So yeah. So ah, if you, do I let if the you, cat out of bag? Yeah. Yeah. So if you look on the Good for Age application page, it said Good for Age applications. Uh, you need to run this time, but it is not guaranteed. So we suggest that you also enter the general ballot. And on my 11th year of trying in the ballot, I got a ballot place. Super. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So so I ran Manchester, ran out of my skin to try and get that good for age place. Absolutely <laughs> delighted that I managed to get the good for age time and then uh, didn't even need it. So I could have sat on my ass and ate cake instead, but <laughs> that's brilliant news, mate. Yeah, so yeah, so I'm I'm well happy. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Is Manchester more expensive than London? No. Uh, from what I've paid for a ballot place, yes. Wow, crazy, craziness. Yeah. Although, Who's what I'm... Manchester? is a great second oh you know? it's incredible what a race would, you know obviously fingers crossed and, and and speaking to everybody that's done london recently an absolute must but if i come the other side of christmas and if it's manchester that i'm doing i wouldn't be disappointed because it is a great great race and great atmosphere so have you entered manchester with the idea that you may do london and if you can you'll cancel your manchester place no i i haven't um, i haven't um put a number in for manchester i'm putting all okay. my eggs in the moment um right. for the good yeah because um because it's on the same day manchester this year um when they released their first lot of places um put a clause in there and said um if you're entering the london ballot um, and you um, enter our marathon and you get a ballot place for London, we will refund. And I thought that was really good of Manchester to do that. Yeah. yeah. So confident they are that you're not going to get a ballot place. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. 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 Because yeah. there was the population of China that entered the uh, the ballot. So they know that you're. Uh... 
you're not you're not going to get in. But uh, yeah, so you'll both be doing that. You're hopefully be you're texting each other at the same time and saying, "How did you both get on?" So um, what time does Man? Obviously, London will kick off slightly later than uh, than Manchester. So I imagine Todd, you'll be away slightly sooner. Because yeah. doesn't doesn't London start quite late, like about ten ish? Yeah, it starts at ten. Yeah. The, the, well, the the men the men and the masses do. The women yeah. in the wheelchairs start a little bit earlier. It's, that is cool, isn't it? So you could be on the same start line as some of the elite men, couldn't you? Yeah. Like, is it only the championship vests at the very very front? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So you have the elites. Then behind that is the championship places, and then right. the masses start. But the yeah. masses will be put into time pens as yeah. well. Right. Yeah. But the, the, you... the start the start at Manchester's changed slight, slightly, hasn't it? Or is it the end? No, the end. So the, the start end. is still the same, but the end's now in the city centre, which I think is oh. much better. Is it the is it the city centre? Because I know it's the university, yeah. isn't it? Something like that. Is it the uni? Yeah. Todd, do you do you know more? I, I, that, well, yeah. That's what I've heard anyway. Yeah. So last yeah. year it it finished in its normal place, but next year, so when you do it. It, the finish has changed. It's going to be in the city centre, apparently. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, that's all I know. Yeah. All well, I know. we so went start, start the, the same, but the finish is different. We did the uh, 10k, didn't we? We went back for uh, uh, you know, and I, I went back some retribution of the Chester Road South and North, and we did the the 10k, and that finished in the city centre. So I wonder whether it's going to finish. Um, where that 10k finished, Todd? Yeah, I I have <laughs> just gone on to their Instagram and it says announcement in 2025 we graduate to a new city centre finish line outside the University of Manchester. Cool. Oh right. So. done the finish line at the 10k. If it's in similar places, that suits it for the funnel in the numbers because, as I say, for the um for the late year previous, you just get funneled into the the cricket ground, don't you? And for your spectators. You've got yeah. no real chance because yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think yeah. it will suit better now. Yeah, finished. yeah. So the, the start stays at Old Trafford, but the finish is oh wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. That's, cool. so that's, what, that's why it's one hundred and sixty-six pounds to enter now. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well, last last year I think I paid ninety summit quid to run Manchester. Yeah. I'm sure it was ninety something pounds. Which is yeah, yeah. crazy, but I was saying this to Andy. You you think UK marathons are expensive now, being like ninety quid and stuff, but the European ones they're like hundred and fifty euros to enter, which is yeah. crazy. And that's before you've even thought about flights and hotels and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I think I looked at Berlin and I thought, crikey, I look like. I just looked, you know, when you're just scrolling and when they open the entries for that, just to see what it would look like. And that, that, that's mega. So yeah. So yeah. And but Berlin's cheeky as well because you have to pay when you enter the ballot, and then if you get a place, it instantly takes your money out. So you've got no second choice. You can't go. Oh, actually, I don't want to do it. It's just yeah. no. Sorry, so, your, your money's taken. Same as Great North Run. That's how you know you've got in because on the morning of the uh, the announcement, you get a your bank goes into the withdrawal. Sixty-four pounds to let's do this dot com. You think, hey, who's that? <laughs> so true. You're like, what? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm right north front. Three years time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. But before, because I know we haven't got too much long, uh, too much longer, because uh, KQ is uh, he's got his past to bake to to get it to get down. Because you are you racing tomorrow? Yes. Yeah. Um... It is the Midland Seven tomorrow um, in Hales Owen. So the cross country Midland Seven, which is, uh, yeah, not that far for us actually, but it is a brutal course. So um, although we haven't had a lot of rain recently, expecting hills um, tomorrow. So we'll have uh, some of the, the best clubs in the region um, going down to Hales Owen for a, a good old. Slog fest over the hills of uh, Lent and Hale Zone tomorrow. Wicked, wicked. And um, who's uh, who's going down then? Any of the, any other the queues going down? Because Todd, you're not racing. 
not racing tomorrow. I can't I can't get it off with work, unfortunately. So it's over yeah. to Carl and um, Carl and RQ tomorrow. So cool. I'll be taking the cameras, they'll be doing the uh, yeah, and hopefully we'll get a photographer uh, on the course because as we'll touch on before we do exit last week's cross country Brit. So, uh-huh. so yeah. So is there going to be a fierce rivalry tomorrow for fastest Q? Well, we'll wait and see. I mean, the boy's full of surprises. Um, <laughs> I saw him last week. Like, out of nowhere, top 50 or something like that anyway. Um, he, he ran a belt. So, yeah, I'm sure he'll be on my shoulder. If not, um, I'll be chasing him. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, c- cross-country season is back in full flow, isn't it? And uh, we, we both raced on uh, Saturday just gone. Uh, TQ, um, and I've got to say, Division One is uh, is next level uh, to Division Two. Just yeah, it just swallows you up, doesn't it? We were yeah, we're, that that first race is always a big big turnout for all the clubs, especially uh, University of Birmingham. They always turn out a big yeah, and you know, uh, a, a load of runners. Yeah, Will Barnaco just. Uh, up the front like it's nothing yeah just crazy um but it does it does thin out a little bit so by the time you get the fixture three in february there's about 16 people there um <laughs> but uh no obviously the yeah the the uh the standard is as yeah it's the best in it's the it's the best in the area isn't it and it's they are such great great events and um Honestly, Andy, you've got to go and do it. And I know we've said it before, but it's a brilliant event. And it's it, just to stick the spikes on and go and throw yourself around the field. It's it, it's it's brilliant. And they're all when you finish and you go over the finish line. And you know, I was I was robbed on the on the home straight last week by a couple of my teammates, which I won't I won't talk about. Um, <laughs> but uh, you do finish and you go, wow, that was fun. that was that was really difficult. So, yeah. so without without stating the obvious, no, actually, state the obvious. What is so hard about it, about cross country? It's it's everything. So, whereas like last week we didn't have loads of mud, we just had hills. And it was four laps. You're on grass, so you haven't got the advantage of being on the roads anyway. There's no carbon track. There's no carbon trainers in sight. It's literally just you, your fitness, and whoever you're in a battle with. The mud. The hills, the grass, and it's it, it really sort of takes takes me back to like playing football growing up on a Sunday on a Sunday morning. It's got that real feel to it. It's really competitive. You're on the start line. It's come on Tipton, and then obviously your other clubs that shape the gun goes, and it's just it's you always find yourself in a battle with somebody, and it's just yeah. nothing like it's nothing like competing on the roads. And I love the roads, but it's just a different. It is a different sport. It is a different yeah. sport. The, the course really? on Saturday as well was just, but, it, it was either uphill or downhill. There was no flat at all. Right. It was just yeah. relentless for the whole race. And yeah, it it was horrendous. I will say that. Right. <laughs> you're not, not only running it for yourself, you're running it, 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 it took for yeah. your team. And, you know, you're running being an individual sport, but you're in a team environment on those days. And so, you know, every number that you can pull back counts. So there's that element to it as well. You're not only running it for yourself, but you're running it for the for the team, um, yeah. which breeds even more of that like real snotty nose competition, which is just yeah. brilliant. Yeah, Brett, you're going to be at the nationals in February. They've just been announced. We're going to Parliament Hill. Oh, is it Parliament Hill next year? Yeah. Oh, what what date is it in February? Oh, uh, I don't off the top of my head. I don't know when he, wanna, he, he, What? Sorry, yeah. I want to say fifteenth Parliament right, Hill. For, do you have to hang qualify on. for that? No, as long as your club enter. Yeah. Should I? Yeah, could yeah. I make that my? Could I make that my debut? My first. Oh. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yes, do it, do it. That would be incredible. I'll, I'll come and down. He, I'll come down and do it. I don't mean to to, to put the frighteners, but Parliament Hill <laughs> yeah. is the best course I've ever run. I lost my shoes. Have you have you done it before? 
Yeah, me and Cole did it yeah. two years ago. And it is such, oh my God, the start line. You go up the hill and it is just, it's a bloodbath. It's brilliant. It's so it's, difficult. But, well, I've, um, I've, heard, I've, I've heard of it. It's like, it's infamous, isn't it? It's the best. Uh, it's, 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 it's the it's home a, of cross country in the oh, UK, really. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. The charge of, it's the charge off Braveheart, isn't it? It's the ultimate, <laughs> yeah. you know, from the start up the hill. And, you know, you've got this start line which goes for about, you know, it must be at least half a mile to at least a K up the hill. And you know you're in trouble when your front runners have gaffer taped their spike. So <laughs> this is something that you'll experience, Andy. You know, there's tying your laces, but if you've got an extreme course, gaffer tape is required as well. So you are literally gaffer like taping. boxing wraps round your ankle. <laughs> Have you... Um... Carl made his feet. He Carl made his debut on YouTube. If you watch Harry Morgan jog on's video of Parliament Hill, Carl yeah. features on. Go and go and do your research. Carl, there's a little clip where Carl acknowledges him going up the hill. But there's a couple of great videos out there that will that capture the course. Wait, wait, was Harry running it? No, he was spectating. Oh. He was. Um, uh, I, he was I was going to say. I was hoping it was Carl running past him going, all right, Harry, <laughs> <As he passed laughs> you, him. mate. Jog on, mate. <laughs> I thank you, Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go, back, go back to watch it. It's, uh, it's, it's brilliant. But, uh, that was the same that Ben Felton did it, didn't he, as well? And, and Benny's uh, running. Yeah. He did a great video of it um, that year. And we, we had a good chat with him on the, uh, the finish line at that one. So I imagine because of the disappointment of last year's being cancelled, this one's going to feel extra special because it's a proper winter cross country yeah. nationals, yeah. And, and it's if it's at the national muddy. home as well, oh yeah, it's going to be muddy. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hilly. Everything you need on a Saturday morning. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a beautiful afternoon last time we did it. It was a lovely sunny afternoon, but the course was still. Treacherous to say the least. I'll, as I say, I lost my spike six times. Will it be a one lapper then? Because it's so so many people. Or is no, 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 it's three three laps. Is it two or three laps? Seven mile, seven and a half mile. It's yeah, a good good yeah. course. Great finish yeah, it, line. Well, it's a, finish line, it, brilliant. They say it's twelve k, don't they? The nationals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So come on, Andy. You've got to. You've got to. Get down there. You've got to make yeah. sure the black pair joggers are signed up and then uh, yeah. get your entry in. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be loads of people from club going down there. Yeah, um, man. Sounds on good. On Sunday, Andy uh, told me he's asked for some spikes for Christmas. So uh, <laughs> I've written Santa, to Santa. <laughs> Santa's going to be putting some spikes down the chimney. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't, I don't, are there any, uh, well, you might be able to tell me. I know Brett's already given me his uh, thoughts and feelings on this. Um, I found some spikes, but they were like integrated spikes. So they weren't removable spikes. And they're Nike Rival something. So I think yeah. they're called Rival. And I just Rival. wondered like if they, because Brett said, well, you know, you can't take the spikes out. And I was like, well, does that matter? And he's like, well, it might do. Depending, yeah, it does uh, they're, they're going to get hammered and they yeah, might not was- last. <laughs> Different, different like length of spike is what will dictate what course you're on. So, you you turn up to that, you can't turn up in the little ones they're going to give you. You need your 15 millimeter spikes. That I mean, the beast happy. or the beast. So, if I'm honest with you, Andy, uh, for what you'll pay for a pair of the rivals, you can get a pair of dragonflies now for 50, 60 quid. And the dragonflies, although they are made for your middle distance and um, your longer distance on the track you're going to get one year out of them uh change the spikes get some deeper spikes in them and they are brilliant um so, so I, you're using track spikes on the cross-country courses then yeah well yeah the, dra- the dragonflies are are track spikes but okay they're great on the cross-country as well uh, they, uh, you know they do- what they, do, the they do make a 
uh, cross country dragonfly now, so it's cross country specific version of the mm-hmm. dragonfly. But again, I think some of the spikes are non removable, or they're yeah, think- or they're like weird big lug spikes rather yeah. than standard spikes. It's a yeah, bit of a okay. trick by Nike that is, you know, that that they've made. They obviously saw that everybody was turning the dragonflies into cross country by changing the spikes and. Then they bring out the year later, like an actual cross country model. There ain't a lot of difference. There's a little bit of more waterproofing, but if you're honest, as soon as you're in that mud, nothing's keeping your feet dry. Um, no. You know, the, the cross country version um, in comparison with what you get for the normal dragonfly, they're not as durable. You know, you're not going to get 20 cross country races out of them. You're going to get a season. Um, yeah. But sort of accept that for 50 60 quid the performance of them are second to none really yeah I, for my uh first pair of cross country spikes i bought the adidas ones i had i've just bought exactly the same pair but the first pair i tracked all my miles on strava and i got just over 100 mile of cross country racing out of them so it's not bad really yeah. for the price that you pay okay yeah cool are there any uh, meets in December? I'm not. I think it'll probably be too soon, considering my uh, marathons at the start of December. But I don't think I'll be able to make any before New Year. I don't know. It, do you know of any cross country fixtures in December? It, the only ones in December are well, no, because the um, the second Birmingham League is the day before your marathon, so it's the thirtieth yeah. of November, and then the only one in December is the County Champs. The Worcestershire you, and Warwickshire County champs. Are you involved in that? But well, you boys are West Mids, aren't you? So are you involved, Brett? Uh, I might do that. I'm not sure yet. It all depends on how next Birmingham League goes. Yeah. Right. Ah, well, it might be a 2020, 20, 2025 endeavour for me then. I think January onwards. Maybe I'll just make my debut at, uh, look, at Parliament. Parliament. Do here. it. Do One it. way. Parliament. Debut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that's gonna be fun yeah sounds good boys yeah. Sign me I've, up. Got, I've got to say though at um, last week's cross country tq was like a proper proper stealth filmer i couldn't tell whether his camera was on or off so he came <laughs> over just having a standard chat but the camera was pointed at me and i couldn't tell whether it was recorded <laughs> or not so i kept on looking at the camera thinking there's no flashing light, so is it on or is it not? And then I was like, hang on, that's a new camera. And I was trying to work out what camera it was. So the footage of me that you must have got is probably going to look really odd and I'm going to look really <laughs> like sheepish or shifty because I'm constantly <laughs> looking at the camera and then looking at you. <laughs> Six e-bikes that were like tracking him all the way around. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't see them. I'm an American. You didn't see. Um, <laughs> talking of talking of e-bikes and that whole thing, I hate to go back into it again. But I was listening to um, the Coffee Club pod. I don't know if any of you listen to that, which is no. the On Boys from. So do, do you know the Australian um, guys and the New Zealand uh, New Zealand guys that run for On? They've got yeah. their own podcast, and they they said they were. At, New York Marathon, and they saw him go past with the e-bikes, and apparently the people wearing the e-bikes had high-vis vests on and lanyards to make them look like they were um, official, so nobody would throw them off the course. It's so not, if you not watch... only did he do it illegally, he made it look so brilliant. Like, oh man, yeah. If you watch his one of his reels of him running the race and finishing it. You can see in his uh, in his shot someone in a high vis jacket on foot. So who, by, whoever it is by now has got off the bike and is now running. They crossed the finish line with him. Yeah, so, in a high vis jacket. So they had high vis on and f- and faked like VIP lanyards to be able to get on there. Yeah. So I went back and watched this video and. Uh, He'll have you fooled when you watch the video, uh, the uh, the actual vlog of the the marathon. You know, you're watching it, and you you know there's there's this. Yeah. He'll have you fooled that it was a mistake, and you know he's holding his hands up, and he's, oh, has he uh, released his race video now? 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, there's a yeah, lot of, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, there's a lot of apology, and I'm very sorry to do what I've done. And... Yeah, I, yeah, as we said, he only apologised because he got called out, and it, it's not like it's the first time he's done it. He's done it yeah. plenty of times and I, done plenty of bad stuff. I like that. I like that Andy was like, "If you can't be good, don't get caught." And then Andy was like, "I might need to add some context to this. I am literally on a day of pain coin." <laughs> Off the top of my <laughs> I don't do bad stuff, honestly. I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a good guy, guys. But uh, Matt Choi, right? So his most of his videos get, let's say, 12, 15, 20,000 views. His latest video has got 51,000 views in three days. So everyone who's been slagging him has been paying him to slag him. So everyone yeah. that's, cl well, everyone's clicked clicked on that video to troll him has probably given him 10p each so oh, i haven't i didn't even know he'd released his video so i'll keep slagging him off anyway <laughs> he's been banned from new york and all of the new york events can he even go into new york anymore but <laughs> <laughs> well according to uh, the coffee cup blood that part they were saying that uh, those new york roadrunners put on events all the time there's pretty much one every weekend and Matt Choi lives in New York, so pretty much all of his content now for races are has oh, disappeared dear. unless he goes to another state. Crikey. Oh, dear. Wonder what paycheck he got for uh, doing that, though, at, at New York. We need to get him yeah. on the podcast. We need to. We need to. <laughs> <laughs> but he'd have to put a T-shirt on first, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do our next podcast, Topless? <laughs> in support of Matt Choi <laughs> well uh, thank you uh, gents we, maybe we should let KQ go and get his dinner because he needs to load up carb load up for tomorrow Yeah, <laughs> and uh, we will wish you uh, on your uh, well on your way so thanks for joining us tonight boys and uh, congratulations on on Chester North Wales yeah. of the M56 <laughs> I hope you uh... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, video. I've got another one coming next video. Oh, uh, all your partridgeisms are absolutely wonderful. Keep them coming. But yeah, thanks for joining us again tonight. And uh, yeah, I th we'll, I we'll think, get you on again, no doubt. I, I, I think, oh, okay, um, TQ, you <laughs> I think you've started a bit of a um, a trend recently as well because all of your videos have had little clips of like uh, um comedies but mainly partridge and stuff and i've noticed a few other local um video content creators have started uh adding partridge clips or uh other certain clips into their videos so you've started a bit of a trend you're uh... yeah oh, yeah i noticed that as well but yeah. i've honestly got a huge huge catalog up in this uh in this yeah, brand yeah. keep delivering them so <laughs> <laughs> amazing paving the way for others to follow well <laughs> boys it's been an absolute pleasure um i look forward to the next time next time we can all meet up and uh hop on the pod but if it's not before christmas i'm sure brett will uh i'm sure we'll see brett the next cross-country mate and yeah definitely I, we, we do speak a little bit but i'm buzzing for the valencia news this morning it's going to be a, a special special event now obviously given what's happened but i'm really pumped to see what you're going to go and deliver because you've put the time in so Best of luck, mate, and uh, us, us lads here. We're, you know, the queue on the run will be supporting you the entire way. So go and bring it home, buddy. Cheers, mate. Thanks, well, lads. Um, yeah. If, 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 if you're interested, TQ, you can go and listen to 25 minutes of me breathing into a camera now. Because uh, at seven o'clock tonight, a um, video dropped on our um, Running the Red Line channel of a bonus episode of oh, Andy's okay. long run from Sunday. Oh, super. Okay, well, that's yeah. my uh, review before bed this evening. So, uh... Brett, Brett genuinely came and match joined me. He uh, he was dr riding his bike filming me. It was brilliant. It was amazing. <laughs> Superb, lads. All the very best. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for joining Thank us, Thank you boys. so much for joining us, boys. And best of luck tomorrow, KQ. Um... Great work, guys. Loads of love. Wise words, TQ. Bring it home, Andy. Will do. Cheers, mate. Amazing. Nice one, guys. See you in a bit.
And then there were two. Right, so thank you so much to TQ and KQ for joining us yet again on the pod. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have them here. Um, and uh, amazing work in Chester. And uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, well, I was going to say I'm looking forward to racing them in uh, the rest of the Birmingham League races. But they're so far ahead that uh, there's no racing going on. I'm just looking behind and watching them go off into the distance. Yeah. So, uh, but well, yeah, they're, divi- no. they're tip Tipton lads, aren't they? So yeah. I imagine Division One, Tipton have got a good reputation. I would expect in cross country uh, world, haven't yeah. they? Yeah, we we I t- tell you what though, I'm really proud of BNR. We had a good showing um, in the first first race of Division One. Um, it uh, where did where did we where did we come? I know we did pretty well uh, in the um, in the Masters um race um so as well as like an overall of the senior men so everybody that's racing there's also a masters division as well so they take all the people who are over 40 and give them points as uh, the same as they do with the normal races um yeah. Yeah. and in the senior men results we came um seventh which is yeah p- p- brilliant out of 16 teams so to get into there and be in the top half is pretty good it's, it's um, equivalent of like the premier league equivalent of like you're like brentford or bright no you're probably more like brighton you've come up into the big league and you, you've you yeah. consolidated now you're saying yeah. that we're we're with the big boys as well yeah and then in, in the masters we were second what so, yeah so pretty good fair so, play that's amazing yeah. so we need to keep that up What's a Masters age group? Uh, over 40s in the Birmingham League. Oh, so you're a Master? Yeah, yeah. No way. All right, okay, cool. Well, you must be pleased with that then. Second? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I actually scored in the Masters B team because uh, we had quite a few good Masters runners uh, with yeah. us. So I, I scored for the Masters B team. We were the first B team, which is cool. Um but yeah, um, I didn't actually uh, manage to score for our A team in the Masters, and I was well, nowhere I, near for the senior team. Nowhere I can near. Imagine, I imagine. I remember you said to me this time last week. You said like, well, when we met up for coffee last week, you said I like was not shocked, but when you told me just how big the gulf was between Division mm-hmm. One and Two, yeah, I, I, I'm thinking, wow, that must be a, a very demanding league if even you're struggling that must be uh god knows how that feels you must feel like <laughs> what's happened <laughs> like cross country i used to do really well at cross country <laughs> yeah 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 but um yeah no it, it was it was great fun but as i say it was it was horrendous I, i'm not sure how many uh of the how many of the uh miles i actually or uh, how many of the meters i actually enjoyed on uh, well, Saturday, but because you were carrying that injury, though, weren't you? You were, yeah, yeah. So I, I went out way too fast. I, t- I went out with people that last year I was running with, um, yeah. So like from BNR, so I went out with Wayne, um, and he's fit at the moment. He's he's in shape, and I stuck with him for the first lap, and got to the end of the first lap, and I think it was uh, about a mile and a half per lap. Yeah. Um, and I got to the end of the first lap and went, I've screwed up here big time. I really have screwed up. And it was just hang on, um, and just, yeah, t- tough it out for the next three laps. And then yeah. the end of the second lap, my calf started to tighten up and it was just like, this is a slog. I've got another half of this to do, but just got to get through it. So, but, so was yeah. it, was it literally up and then down and up and then down? Yeah. So, so the, it started and there was a, gradual incline from the start you then went across the top of the field and then back down and it was a long like a gradual slope down to the bottom and then it just went back up and quite steep and then then you turned around and went back down but it was like stepped down and then you did a bit of a zigzag back on yourself and then through a wooded bit um which was all an uphill slope back to the start yeah. and do that all again so yeah it was either up or down for the whole thing 
So was it a new course? You'd not re- you're not racing. I'd, that I'd never before? run that before. Yeah, no, I'd never run that before. But apparently, right. it's a it's a constant on the uh, Division One um, calendar. So yeah, it was interesting. Wow. But I'm looking how, forward to to the next one. How do you feel about the prospect of nationals then being at London then? Oh, I, 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 since since I'd started doing cross country, that's a course I've always wanted to have a go at. So uh, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it that sounds really, really good. good. Yeah, and yeah. how much is it to enter? Um, club, I can't remember. I can't remember. It's not that expensive. It's not right. ex- that expensive at all. Um, yeah, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Because I, I didn't do this year's, did I? Because uh, it got cancelled yeah. and then they rebooked it for the start of this year. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, can I? <laughs> this is going to sound really bad. Can I do some shameless plugging? Yeah, God, go for yeah. it. Because um, I have been busy at my uh, shop uh, recently, and I finally, I've been talking about these for a long, long time. But I finally got my butt into gear and um, finished printing. Yes. The uh, the tees for this Love new them. design. So Wicked. I've got those, those three colorways are all printed. And I'm going to get them onto uh, my website ASAP. Hopefully this week um, they will be up on the website. And then so I've for, also... I say for any... For anybody listening, there was like a, a blood red on white. There was like a peach colour. Um, yeah. You can, you can best describe them. And then there's a purple yeah, one. So, 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 yeah. So, it, it, so it's um, red on white. And it's like a it's like a tie-dye type of pattern, but it's like a swirl, um, like striped across it. It's not really tie-dye as in the usual sense of tie-dye. But yeah, um, yeah. there's a... A, a white with red print, and then there's a purple, or, well, lavender, yeah, um, nice. with black print. Cool. Um, and then there is a peach with a black print as well. Um, so these That's... are the first three colours that I'm doing. Uh, I've seen would... I've I've seen Mac wear that more than you. Yes, I know. It's it's <laughs> like it's like it's the only. Only running to he owns it. I've, I've, I, I think I owe him for sponsorship the amount he wears it in all his videos. Yeah, um, so th- thank you, friend of the pod, Mac. You are yeah, an absolute star. Podcast. Um, I have also, um, it now, but probably <laughs> <laughs> get, getting ready to watch the pod, puts the t shirt on, sits there waiting for it to upload. Um, I've also, um managed to do a run of um hats like running um caps and they've got a awesome. nice flexible peak and it's a nice short peak as well because ah, um, nice I'm not a massive fan of long peaked running hats um yeah. but the print on them is actually reflective so they will be good for um these winter nights and there's also yep. a print on the bottom of the peak as well so if you did want to run with your hat with a peak up um so you you don't get um yeah just so it doesn't block your view you can yeah. do that but there yeah. is a, a, a an off white beige and black with red print cool there is a black and coal gray with a red print nice there is also uh where is it a mint green with a red print yeah you had me at mint green big fan um and then there is well, it is mint green, but it's slightly, it's slightly um, pastel mint green, mm. I would say. Uh, then I've got a, a navy blue and uh, pastel blue with blueprint. Cool. Um, and then we've got a olive green and uh, like a, what do you say, army khaki green? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. With a reflective silver print. And then finally, grey and bright, like lime green, with a silver print as well. Um, Very cool. Th- those are those. And then I've done a third item, which is the reflective hats, which I talked about ages now, ago to you. These are cool. And I could have done with one of these today because I was running in the fog. 
And it was freezing cold and it was quite dark. Yeah. And I was running on some dodgy areas. Yeah. So these basically, the, the, the threads you can see in the beanie, uh, the light threads. So this is a grey one and I've also done a yellow one. So the grey threads you can see in that and the lighter threads you can see in the grey are reflective thread. So mm. when the headlights shine on you, you basically your head basically becomes a big reflective dome um yeah so, yeah. yeah i've also also doing a black one as well but i haven't got round to finishing those off as well so there's yellow gray and black in those but nice. um yeah I'm, I'm i'm quite pleased i managed to find a few minutes to uh get those i say a few minutes a few hours to get those out because uh they have been sat waiting for months i mentioned those how long ago and uh, they've just sat in my shop waiting for me to find time. So uh, how how yeah. how can people get hold of them? So I, I will be getting them on my website hopefully this week. But um, my website is uh, www.theob1.co.uk, um, and just click the uh, store button, and it will take you to the online store. Epic. But yeah, I just thought I'd do some shameless plugging on uh, on this pod and. Uh, and get them out to people. Well, more more shameless plugging. We should probably plug the uh, video that we've just put out. Yes. The bonus, the bonus video. Because last week, um, we I did my last long run for uh, for the Valencia block, and Brett, as he as he said, was a man of his word and came up to mine and uh, ran two out of three laps for me. And the last lap cycled and and sort of filmed the whole thing. So uh, thanks for that, mate. That was uh, that was really yeah, good. No. We got so much footage that we've made like a. It's got. I mean, this is purely maybe me thinking a bit bigger than it actually is, but it's got a little bit of a sweat elite feel to it. That's, <laughs> what, that's what I like. That's what I'm. That's how I'm uh, thinking about it. That's how I'm choosing to think about it. And it's like we've put like just a wild track, so it's just the sounds of, you know, your bike or of the road or of the birds, you know, of the yeah super shoes slapping the ground you know so you can literally feel like you're there and it's like a 25 minute video and i said to you earlier this week i was like should we just put this with like no music and just sort of have it just let all those shots just breathe and just you know make minimal cuts and just put all put them all together and you're like yeah sounds good and i'm really glad the way it's come out because we've put it as like a little special bonus video yeah and it's only it's only been out for about an hour or two so yeah go and yeah, watch it yeah. if you haven't already yeah um yeah I, I really enjoyed that it was a it was a a great morning a great way to spend the morning but um yeah i i i had to get up quite early to get over to you to start when you wanted and uh I I, 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 no 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 it's all good but it was it's it, my own fault um i because i did the cross country on the saturday and then yeah. did a bit of work afterwards and i then got my bike ready and everything because i knew my calf wasn't going to be able to do the whole 20 mile so i thought i'll do as much as i can and then jump yeah. on the bike so i was getting my bike ready and everything and i thought to myself i could just cycle to worcester and then cycle all of andy's run and then cycle home and i was like that's a brilliant idea i am definitely doing that and then i carried on getting stuff together and then looked at my watch and it said half two in the morning <laughs> and i was like I'm not cycling to Worcester because I'm going to have no sleep as it is. I'm not <laughs> cycling all the way to Worcester on no sleep at all. So, uh, yeah, so I chucked it in the car and drove over instead. But I'm, yeah. I'm quite pleased I did because I really enjoyed the the miles we ran together. That was good. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? It was um, yeah. It was nice to just roll out some, um, some marathon pace because the week before that, I did uh, a session which was a bit slightly longer. 35k which is about 21 22 miles and what i did in that is i did 5k blocks so as good as that was because i was hitting the paces i was having a rest every 15 yeah. minutes which is good but i wasn't doing blocks of marathon pace uh, and apart from my half marathons that i've done this block i haven't run anything over like 15 or 20 minutes of consecutive marathon pace. So putting that, you know, 16K, that 10 mile together at the end yeah. of last week's run, I think worked really nicely. 
and has given me a, a, a bit of confidence. Yeah, you ran it all really well, but basically you you hit paces faster than you wanted to for the um, like the steady and the uh, Newport pace. Um, yeah, so it hit those quicker than you needed to, and then ten mile of marathon pace was great work. So yeah, it was... you're in a good place, ready for this taper and ready for Valencia. Yeah, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm, I've had. It's part of me still does feel a bit odd about going over there. Just, I mean, that's probably natural. I'm sure thousands of people are feeling the same, but I'm just glad that we're out of limbo now when there's no more like, yeah, because so yeah, many what... people have been like, like, oh, have you joined this group? Because on this group, so like the New Balance have told their athletes that they shouldn't be doing it, and and I just feel like saying like that. Like some press releases have been released this week saying, and in the first sentence it says, although it's not official, the marathon, the Valencia marathon is set to go ahead on first. It's like, read the first sentence. This is not yeah, evidence yeah. that it's going ahead. It still might get cancelled. So people yeah. are saying, yes, it's definitely on. No, but all the new balance athletes have been told not to go. Um, how do you know this person isn't a massive charlatan, is not secretly sponsored, not sponsored by new balance? Yeah. You know, there's, you just can't believe anything until you've got definitive evidence. Exactly. And I'm so glad that we have now. Yeah. And now we can start to make proper preparations now for the travel, yeah. for the for the weekend away, for yeah. for, for the race, and, for everything. And it's and it's one less thing playing on your mind whilst you're still training and in that taper because you don't need that stress of not knowing whether the race is on or off. As, yeah. Along with the stress of having to run a marathon coming up, yeah. So and, I'm, yeah, and I don't, good. I don't have to run it around the race course anymore. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so we're all happy about that. So, yeah, uh, definitely. I was going to say, shall we? Shall we quickly go through if we've got time? Because I know we've got to read a few comments and emails. But um, can I just tell you quickly about my week of training? It's not been very of long. Course. Yeah, go for it. Um, starting from last Saturday. Um, I can't remember if I said on the podcast or not, but I said I was going to, I might have said I was going to go over to do parkrun. And I went to a place called Mallard's Pike, which is in the Forest of Dean, which you might have heard me talk about fleetingly before. And I'd say it's probably my favourite parkrun of all of them. It's just, it's just beautiful. It's just such a nice place to get away from roads and cars and people. And it's, it's, we, Laura, uh, it wasn't even Laura, Laura, Laura's at work that day. So, Daisy and I went down to uh, down to the Forest of Dean. We did the parkrun first, and then we did a sort of 10K top-up because there's a, like a running route around, a bit like a mountain bike track. Like it's literally a, you follow this red marker um, until you see the next one and yeah, blah, blah, blah. And it's literally a running route, 10K around the forest. So we did 15K in total. But good news, Daisy won. Daisy was yeah. the first. Daisy was first dog. Amazing. So uh, we... We we started out <laughs> we started out because the good thing about Marlard's Pike is if you're running with the dog, you can start at the front and feel guilt free basically because you can get out fast and you don't have to worry that you know that your dog's going to be a bit stressed because at any other park run like Aravalli or Worcester, you don't really want to be at the front because there's people doing 17 minutes or 16 minutes and it's like well we're just going to Daisy's just going to get under your feet because I can't run that fast she could um, but at Mallard's Pike, there was, I think we finished in, I finished in ninth. So I was, you know, and it's, it's not a congested park and it's, it's, um, it's probably only about a hundred people there on the day, but um, I'd said, right, I'm going to do this as like a marathon pace thing at most at, at, you know, at the very most intense, I'm going to just run marathon pace. We started off faster than marathon pace <laughs> and the first half is uphill. <laughs> And I got at the top of this hill and I got overtaken by a couple of people because I just sort of said on camera, right, let's see if we can run steady now and just carry on this, this marathon pace. Uh, and no, I got overtaken a couple of times and I thought, I'm, I'm, no, th this that's not for me, thanks. So we ended up just going, we just absolutely hammered it down the hill. And the last K, we did it in like uh, probably 18 minute parkrun pace, probably quicker <laughs> than that. We finished with a 340 per K uh, finish. Uh, and yeah, Daisy finished first dog, and then which was Amazing. pretty cool. And then we went and did our 10K around the forest, which was really nice. 
Um, and then Daisy, you'll see if you've watched it, because I've released my video on last week now, you'll see Daisy going like, I lost Daisy for like 30 seconds. I was like, where is she? What is she? Why is she chasing after wild boar or something? I went around this corner and she was just rubbing herself up and down like in some fox excrement. <laughs> and I was just like, you absolute idiot. I've got to sit in next to you in the car for an hour. So cheers for that. And then Sunday we did our 32K run, which went really, really well. So that was, like you said, five, five mile or 8K steady, uh, a little bit less steady. And then the last K was the last 8K was um, marathon pace. And I was going to do a slightly faster block towards the end. Um, but I just, it just didn't happen. No, I think it, because that, and it was a good thing that it didn't happen as well. It was it? a very yeah. good decision to, yeah, to not push it harder. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I think you made the right decision there. So yeah, my, my my body just naturally fell into that marathon marathon effort, uh, and on that day, that was the end of my 120k week or 75 mile week, and I just had enough. I think I don't think I had another 10k in me because that was 32k. So I don't think I could have run a marathon that day. No. Can I just stop you there though? Um, you said 120k week. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, 119.9. <laughs> but you got to you got to round it up these days, haven't you? You got to round up. Uh, so since then, I've just done a couple of runs: Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Today, uh, Monday was a steady eleven k. Uh, Wednesday was a run up the hills. I did twelve and a half k, just doing some easy hills, which was nice. Nice weather at the top of the Malvins, which was lovely. Uh, didn't particularly push the ups or the downhills. It was just a nice, nice easy pace. Uh, just trying to get some. Um, doing my last hill session of this Valencia block because I'm not going to risk going up there next week or the week after, just in case I go over and do a Charlotte Purdue, basically. I don't want to risk going over on my ankle so close mm. to the uh, – and it's so easy to do that with the Malvins, especially yeah. with the wet surfaces now and the foggy uh, fogginess yeah. and the uh, and the, the, the freezing temperatures. And, you, and then today – Sorry, I was just going to say, you, you said those uh, night peg trails aren't uh... – the best grip wise either i really like them but they're i wouldn't say shit but they're pretty <laughs> shit <laughs> they're just they look so good but they're only good i think they're more like a summer trail shoe which is ironic considering they're gore-tex and they're not gore-tex by the way because every time i keep taking my shoe off i've got wet feet unless it's my yeah. own sweat that's like condensation um they're just terrible on, on wet rock. Anything that's slightly damp, I would not trust them at all. So I wouldn't definitely wouldn't wear them anywhere near like a mountain or anything like that. They're bad enough on the hills. They were good in the forest last week because that's all sort of hard packed gravel and that was largely yeah. flat and there were some muddy sections, which they're quite quite good in the mud, actually. They're not too bad. Um, but yeah, no good on the uh, wet rock. And then today... I did a, uh, I, I decided, cause I, I decided because I couldn't do track Wednesday night because I was working and I decided that I was going to do, I wanted to do some speed, but I just, I just didn't, didn't get around to do any speed work. Um, so I decided today just to do like a pyramid run. So I know you did pyramid. Did you do pyramid intervals with uh, BNR this week or was it your club mates uh, that were doing it? Yeah. Club mates did it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, all right. Rub it in. Sorry. Sorry, making you feel bad. I was I was following Will and Lisa and all that from the from the club and I saw they did yeah. that. I yeah. couldn't remember if you'd been down or not. Um, no. um and I did a pyramid session today, oh. but a pyramid in terms of speed, not, yeah, yeah. not like not like time on, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So so I started off with like an easy, an easy K, and then I went, I worked everything was a kilometer long, and I went 10 seconds faster every K until I hit marathon pace. And then I worked all the way back down until I, nice. and I, I managed to stop the watch like a couple of hundred meters from my house, which is amazing. Worked out really well. Uh, so yeah, so that was my uh, that's my week. Nice. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good work. So, yeah, my my week has been. I did cross country on the Saturday. Came and did the long run with you on Sunday, and then yeah. um, I haven't run since. I have oh, done mate. cross trainer. 
and a static bike in the gym. And that's about it. Really? So, yeah. But um, it's feeling better, my calf. So that's yeah. that's a good thing. Um, and I'm going to go down and run park run tomorrow and just see how it feels. Uh, I'll probably drive down, though, and uh, just run park run rather than running down and running back like I normally do. Um, and then, yeah. obviously, we've got our run at Alton Towers on Sunday. So I'm, I'm yes. Think I'm thinking I might be joining you for the whole of that race so we can uh, put some of your marathon pace to, oh, to really? uh, the test. Yes, rather you, than you, ra racing it. Yeah, don't forget your bike again. Your bike <laughs> yeah. jacket. you got your yeah, lanyard. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to get on Photoshop and mock up a VIP. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, yeah, okay. Well, if, I mean, I, I haven't quite worked out what I'm going to do, but it's going to be similar to... To last week, so I imagine probably getting round in about one fifty ish, one forty eight. No, in fact, I think last year my poo B was one forty seven. Yeah. No, it wasn't a poo B because I beat my poo B in Warwick, didn't I? No, because I didn't actually have a poo in Warwick. Yeah. I was exactly. just had a bad bad tummy. Um. Yeah. So yeah, let's if we could try and beat one forty seven, that's probably what yeah. I'll be after. So, yeah, we're in a one forty five. We're in a one forty five. Yeah, that's eight minute mile, isn't it? So that's steady. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, oh, uh, so yeah. if that, if that, yeah, hang on, if that's same mini mile, we'll run faster than that if we put into marathon pacing. So, because seven thirties are uh, seven thirty fives marathon pace for me. Seven thirty six, yeah. I think. Yeah. So, so uh, we, so yeah, we'll 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 beat your pooby, no probs. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Cool. So that's look. I'm looking forward. So if anyone is doing the Alton Towers half marathon, maybe they're listening to it on their way. This <laughs> podcast on their way to Alton Towers. Yeah. So uh, yeah, come and say hello if you uh, yes, definitely if you're in town. Yeah. Um. So we should. Um. Well, we're running out of time, aren't we? So yeah. what I think we need to do probably leave comments and emails till next week. Yep, sounds good. Yeah. Um. But what I do want to mention because we both put this on the thing was. Um, we had a Parker and World Record on Saturday. Uh, yes. So um, absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So over in Belfast in Ireland at the Victoria Park Park Run, uh, Nick Griggs. Who did you know? Nick Griggs is only nineteen years old. What? <laughs> so Nick Griggs, no. who's a nineteen-year-old uh, runner. He broke the Parkrun world record and ran 13.44. And he broke the world record by Andy Butchart by one second. So Andy Butchart earlier this year ran a 13.45 and Nick Griggs ran 13.44. Wow. That's crazy. He's beat it by a second. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, an amazing, amazing achievement, isn't it? And it Apparently, when he set off, he didn't mean to go for the record. It just happened because um, apparently his coach before a big race always says, go down to Parkrun, have a good effort down at Parkrun, and then you'll be ready for the race. And yeah. that's what he did and went and ran a world record. So pretty, wonder, pretty impressive. I wonder what this has done for his popularity because I, yeah. I wasn't aware of him. And then he goes and run a blooming park run of all things. And now everybody knows who he is. So it's yeah. uh, pretty yeah. cool, isn't it? But, it, but it, it, it's amazing. And 100% we should be um, uh, celebrating it and how yeah. good it actually is. But it does bring into question the whole park run records and stats thing. And yeah. Um, yeah. They, they, they will do everything they can park run to get away from the fact that it's a time trial or it's not a race it is yeah. a community event for health um benefits it's not yeah. and, and park run have even gone to as far to say it's not a sport um park run it's it's a, a community health uh benefit or something like that. i can't remember exactly what their words were yeah but then the next in their next breath, they're celebrating Nick Nick Griggs running a world record. 
So, so did Parkrun actually congratulate him for it? Yeah, they put it on their Instagram and everywhere, saying uh, Nick Griggs has won a run a world's best parkrun time. Yeah. So they need to make up yeah. their mind, really, do they? Because um, yeah, I know you, you mentioned that uh, film my run has done a video on it on uh, yes. YouTube, which I haven't seen. But uh, yeah. he normally makes some really good videos, so I'll, I'll have to give him, go and give that a watch. Yeah, he, yeah, he, 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 it's it's a good video, and he he looks at both sides of the argument, and uh, yeah, comes to a good conclusion. But yeah, yeah Parkrun do need to make up their mind of what their um, stance is in um, in public to yeah. people, um, because. If they're worried that people who are running fast are going to put people off um, coming and doing parkrun for the first time, which is one mm. of the things they said when they took the stats away, was yeah. people worrying about times, it puts people off. Then then they're saying, look how fast this person is at parkrun. Isn't yeah. that giving mixed messages, really? But yeah, there we go. Yeah. But on that note, I have, right, forgotten about this so many weeks in a row. And I have been meaning to do it every week and then completely forget. And we get to the end of two hours and then we end the episode and I go, oh, man, I didn't mention that. So back in September um, this year, so on September yeah. the 28th, a young lad from Redditch, uh, called Jacob Fenton, um, who you met down at the Redditch 10K. Yes, I did. He um, he and his dad went down to uh, Torbay, to Torbay Velo Park, Park Run, um, because um, it is where the previous uh, world record for a seven-year-old at Park Run was set. So Jacob decided that if he was going to try and break the record, he was going to do it on their home turf where it was well, broken before. So Fair enough. Yeah. So uh, from Redditch, but they traveled down to Torbay to this park run and uh, they set off and he ran it with his dad. And Jacob broke the world record for a park run at seven years old. Now, <laughs> what do you think a seven-year-old can run for 5K at a park run? What do you reckon his finish time was? I don't know. 20, 22 and a half minutes. I don't know. I mean, yeah. that sounds really quite fast, doesn't it? Yeah. For a seven-year-old, that would be quick, wouldn't it? Yeah. No, Jacob ran it in... 20 minutes and 29 seconds. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's faster than most most adults, isn't it? That's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, well, put it into context. That's 25 seconds behind your PB. Exactly. That I've been working towards for years. Yeah. So uh, th that is an incredible pace. So, Jacob, uh, amazing work. So, um, yeah. So... He's got the seven-year-old park run record and his dad is now trying to get England athletics to uh, recognize it. Yeah. Because unfortunately, because he's only seven and he's like in the kids um, categories, they yeah. only record records up to 3K because oh. they don't want young kids doing too long a distance. So yeah. to discourage people like, like young people going and doing the longer races they only yeah. recognize records up to 3k so mm -hmm. he yeah his dad at the moment um steve is trying to get it registered as a record for a seven-year-old but fingers crossed they do but yeah, yeah amazing work jacob that's amazing uh, work jacob great great work and i met i met you jacob and i met your sister when you were cheering yes. me on uh yeah. was it uh, and and um, they were, honestly, they were giving me so much support on that 10k that we did last yeah. uh, week or two back in uh, uh, the Kingfisher 10k around Ara Valley, yeah. and they were just no, they were just uh, you can see like how much they love. Yeah, they were your little cheer squad for it, weren't they? Yeah, and you can just Every see how much lap. they love 
and they knew me, they knew you, they knew Donato. Like they, you, you can see these guys love their running, and they were watching like running videos, and they're obviously just mad for it, and it's brilliant to see. And yeah, uh, yeah going to be an absolute star, Jacob is definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, so um, with that, have you got anything else before we move on to the Strava segment? Yeah, just a quick shout out to um, Dan Neal. So Dan. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It always makes me chuckle when people text me asking me for advice, especially on ultras. <laughs> I don't know why anyone thinks I've got anything interesting or influential to say about ultras. I've only done about four. Um, but I was like, probably can't help you, but carry on. He's like, well, I'm trying to do a tw- <laughs> He's doing it right. Okay, this race that Dan is doing is called Escape from Meriden. Now, anyone that knows Meriden, Meriden, I think, is in Warwickshire, uh, sort of Coventry Way. And I think, statistically, it's called Meriden because <sighs> some Latin meaning there. And I think it's one of the... Uh, furthest away from the sea in the UK. I think Meridian, something like that. I think that's yeah, where yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the word comes from. But the idea of this is uh, you. there is an ancient cross marking the centre of this land. At midnight, 100 shadows will flee any way they choose. The further they run, the richer their reward. They will be watched. <laughs> they have got 24 hours to get as far away from Meriden on foot as as they possibly can. And Dan is doing it in a partnership. There are two of them doing it. And they are choosing to go, well, uh, should I say? No, I don't think anyone. No, this race will be over by the time this comes out. So I think it's literally tonight and tomorrow. They're going to try and head towards Wales to the Elan Valley which yeah. I looked on Google, and from Meriden, it's 102 miles away. So that's where they're hoping to get to. And if you listen to this, Dan, I really hope that was enough for you. Firstly, I hope you are you survived the freezing cold night and the mud and the hills and yeah. the, and and the, the werewolves black. and the full moon. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, so, yeah, I hope you survived okay and managed to, you know, not fall asleep in the middle of a blooming farmer's field or something. And yeah, I hope you two got the win because um, if you made it to Wales, surely that's enough. Yeah, surely that's, that's enough to get the win. That'd be incredible, man. But so fa- on fancy a wanting to night as well. Like, yeah, fancy wanting to run to Wales where it's hilly. <laughs> <laughs> what are they thinking? Oh, Dad, should have gone to Norwich. You should have gone the other way. Should have gone to East Anglia. Uh, yeah. Oh. But oh, no, man. I, I maybe there's maybe there's method in the madness. Maybe, maybe they know exactly the route. Maybe it's familiarity, and they know the towns and the villages, and you know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That, that that they'll be running through. Um, so, so that, but yeah, uh, best of luck to you guys. It sounds like an absolutely crazy race, and I would love to know how you got on. But I like the idea that at midnight they all get released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The website, look at, can you see the website? Like, it's all spooky. It's all like, um, everything's like. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. The host is the crow. It says he will be oh. watching. That's who your host is. Amazing. So, uh, yeah. Good luck to all you runners doing Escape from Meriden. Yeah. Best of luck, Dan. Uh, yeah. yeah. Ho- hopefully, you're so far in the distance, people will be going, Dan. 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 Dan, Dan, Dan. <laughs> you can't Dan. hear me. Can't hear me. Dan, <laughs> Dan. <laughs> um, <laughs> any, anyway, Strava segments. <laughs> and do you know what, Andy? Yeah. Two weeks on the trot. Give it to me. You, you've done it again. Yes. You are top of the Strava leaderboard. Oh, see it again. Ooh. But, right. Uh, well, actually, I'll go into this in a minute. So, first first place, we have Andy Maguire on 74.5 miles. So, I'm be- very, very uh, good with that. Nice round number, 
If it had been 0.6, I wouldn't have been very happy. Um, <laughs> and then in second was Neil Vizara with 66.5 miles. And third was ba Jack Bancroft with 66 miles. Um, oh, then climbing, so our elevation gain, in first place was, can you guess? You. No, oh, uh, I've done no running, really, have I? It's, it's got to be one of our Welsh contingent. Tommy D? Mm, no. Tom Pothicurry? No, in first place for our elevation game is Andy Maguire. No! With 4,045 foot. I've in done second, the double! Yes! In, in second place is Ryan Gowan with 3,916 foot. And third place is Ash Spedding with 3,809 foot. But you'll like this. So there is also on our Strava leaderboard a total running time. So who spent the most time running for the week? Yeah, yeah. Which we don't normally say because, um, yeah, because we look at distance and climbing instead. But who do you think has topped the total running time for last week? Is it me with the hat trick? You have got the hat trick with 10 yes! hours and 33 minutes. <laughs> Get in! Unbelievable <laughs> scenes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you, you did the hat trick. Great work. Yes! Mate. I've never won anything in my life. <laughs> I've won three things in one go. Um, so, with that in mind, we now need to find our top three ladies. So, our top lady was Avine D um, uh, with 51.7 miles. Decent. Well uh, in second was D Cook Rees with 48.3 miles. And in third was... Um, Lisa Thomas with 36 miles. Ah, so, well done, ladies. Congratulations to everybody on the leaderboard this week. And uh, yeah, well done, Andy. Thank you. You got the hat trick. Oh, you, can, you, be... you can now keep the match ball. Yes, it's going to be uh, another 12 months or so because I don't think I'm going to do a spring marathon. I don't think. I might be a bit uh -huh. of a spoiler. So I don't think I'll be running anywhere near this volume for a long time. So it might be 12 months. I, I don't know. I because do it, I don't know. Because like February will come around and you'll go, let's do a hundred mile ultra. Yeah. Let's escape from Meriden. Let's try and yeah, escape yeah. from Worcester. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's what you're like. I've, uh, I won't do much mileage. Uh, should we see if we can run from here to John O'Groats? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So there we go. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> on that, um, thank you so much to everybody for um, listening or watching. Uh, thank you to TQ and KQ for joining us again this week. And um, yeah, we shall see you next week. Cheers, guys. See you guys. <laughs>